today on Admirals All Access. The Admirals third year blue liner. Size, skill, and versatility has left number 22 wearing many hats for the club since he turned professional. A day in the life of Admirals defenseman Scott Valentine is coming up next on Admirals All Access. Tuesday morning in Milwaukee. In 30 hours, the Admirals will board a bus for a road game matchup against the Rockford Ice Hogs. For now, it's the beginning of another practice day for the roommates of apartment 901. So there's three of us living at, at my apartment, and uh, my first roommate, Mike Lambis, he's from Toronto. Mike is, is really a, a stand-up, straightforward guy. He, he doesn't, doesn't hold any punches, you know, physically or, or verbally, but he's the type of guy he, who will do anything for his teammates, and I think that shows on the ice, uh, the way he sticks up for us as well. Colton, who's actually a rookie this year, being such a young kid, it's amazing how mature he is, how, how he's stepped in, and obviously on the ice he's performing incredibly. He's, he's you know one of our, our top line centermen. Uh, off the ice, um, you know we're, we're teaching them things here and there, but we, we really have a nice setup here. These are apartment apartment mugs, 901. It's our group. We figured we'd uh, kick off our our year by getting customized mugs with a nice picture of the three three amigos on there. So we all have our own, and when we sit here and have our tea together and talk about our our thoughts, it's nice. Playing professional hockey had long been a dream for this Ontario Canada native and in 2009 the NHL entry draft made that dream a reality. The year I was drafted uh, was a pretty cool experience. I wasn't expecting at all to be drafted, especially early on and when I found out at the end of the year that, that I'd been, been ranked and basically right around 100th in the world for my age, that was a pretty special feeling and that, that was the first time I, I felt I'd really got that, uh, that recognition and made all that hard work sort of worth it. Um, but even then I wasn't expecting anything going into the draft. I was at home, it was, it was the middle of the summer and, um, and I knew it was, the draft was going on but I didn't pay attention to it. I was actually cooking breakfast at the time with my family and, and got a call from my agent saying I'd been drafted by the Anaheim Ducks and you know, nothing can compare to, to your childhood goal. To, to have your name, you know, associated with a with an NHL team, it was a pretty neat feeling, and definitely a day I, I won't forget. Professional athletes try not to allow the highs to be too high or the lows to be too low. The mix on this year's squad is a good one that keeps an even oh, keel. Nice shot, Josh. Coming into the season, uh, there were there were some question marks from the outside world on our team. I think because of because of the fresh faces. I think that we caught a lot of people off guard with the way we started the season, um, but I don't think we, we expected any differently. We're a group that works extremely hard, whether it's in practice, games, and once you add in some experience as we go along through the season, I think it'll only help us out. We have a good mixture of, of talent, grit, feistiness. We have some experience on the back end with some youth. I, I think we have a great team that, that has caught people off guard and that we're only going to get better as, as guys pick up some more games under their belt and, and experience some, some different situations. Usually we try and get a good meal in before we go over to the rink. Um, sometimes it can be a long morning. We do have some food over there, but we like to uh, eat here and, and just sort of let it settle a bit. Today we got some uh, gluten-free pancakes here. May or may not be some chocolate chips in them. I don't know. Um, so we're just going to enjoy some of those, pull in some, some toast, uh, we'll get yogurt going, just stuff like that, something to give us some energy for, uh, for you know, a tough morning's work. On a practice day, we like to get up and have breakfast, uh, you know, the three of us roommates here, we, we usually eat together and then have a cup of coffee or a tea and, and watch some, uh, some sports highlights 
and basically just sort of get our mind turned on before we head over the ring. We got, uh, got our breakfast in us. Now we head over to the rink, um, which is just around the corner, which is nice, but uh, sometimes we drive um, if we're at the practice rink or whatever, or we need our car after, so, um, but we can walk, which is always a nice option. Um, so yeah, we're ready to go start the day. Two hours remain until practice begins for Scott Valentine and the Milwaukee Admirals. a.m. and players begin arriving at the rink for practice. Yo, that's VIP service right there. Hey, that's a good wife. Is that as close to the door she could get you? We always try and find a way to, you know, give a guy a little grief or, or pick on him a bit and just to, uh, you know, keep him honest. It's not a big car. It's not my car, so you gotta, you gotta be careful. He exposed himself by getting dropped off right in front of the door by his uh, lovely wife and I would let him know that, you know, Sometimes maybe a little further away would be okay and, and give him the exercise, you know. He's an older guy, he could, he could use it, loosen the joints up a bit, but. Team members begin going through their practice day routines. A recent injury to roommate Mike Liambus saw Scott Valentine filling in offensively during shifts on the ice. Now that fellow blue liner and team captain Scott Ford is out with a broken foot, Valentine has returned to his normal defenseman role. Getting the chance to play forward recently was a welcome challenge. Obviously playing a different position than you've played for the last 15 years of your life is always going to be tough. Um, but I got to play it a bit at the end of last year and, and was able to basically just use my, my speed and my strength to, to sort of you know, impose myself as a power forward and help out our forward check and you know, not try and do too much. I'm not going to go out there and, you know, and, and be a, a highlight reel forward or anything like that. So. The versatility of, of getting to play forward one game and you know even if they needed a defenseman during that game or vice versa, it's something that I can do, it's something that uh, is welcomed um, because you always sort of want to challenge yourself and, and it keeps you sharp, it keeps you paying attention um, you know, to, to all different aspects of the ice, not just one position. By nine, the team is assembled in front of a TV screen. The coaching staff breaks down game film of a previous contest and plans for the following day's matchup against Rockford. It's good, Chip. Ref's obviously in the way, but our structure's correct. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Waddy's in a spot, okay, to help. Okay, now we're in a good spot. Prior to practice, we'll have uh, video and what we call pre-ice, which is where we go over that day's work. Video will sometimes be of a previous game where we're, we're showing stuff that we need to either do better or that we did well. Um, and then if it's cl in closer proximity to our next game, we'll uh, go over stuff for that game. And then for pre-ice, uh, Coach Evison will come in and he'll usually just rattle off the first five or six drills so that when we get over there and get on the ice, we're not you know standing around while we explain stuff. So. He does those pretty quick and we've sort of you know, learned how to, to pick those up as, as we go and, and be sharp right from the first minute of practice. After video, players attempt to get loose before the practice ahead of them. The team gears up and leaves the dressing room to head over to practice ice at the Kern Center. With a road game on the docket the following day, practice is light along here? with the mood. Can we use you out here? Yeah, sure. Why? <laughs> hey, I'm just, I'm just watching you skating around. I'm just making sure we can use you out here. Quality touches out here. Come on, Salty. Yes, that's a goal. I'm a lefty, Shells. I'm a lefty. Oh yeah, way to carry the load there, D, eh? Way to carry the load, boys. You know, we practice so often, whether it's, it could be twice in a week, but it could be four or five times in a week. So you gotta keep things fun and you, you gotta enjoy being on the ice. I mean, the reality is the reason why we play this game is because we love it. So um, trying to keep things light and fun, I'm, you know, you, you like talking to guys out there and 
you know, it, it sort of keeps them sharp as well and wakes them up a bit and wakes me up a bit, you know, being, uh, being vocal and maybe making fun of a guy or, you know, asking him how his night was or whatever and not making it all about business all the time and, and just trying to enjoy yourself, you know, playing the game we love. That's it, baby, that's it. Get us the puck. Do the drill right. Do the drill. Part of being, you know, a vocal guy is you got to be vocal when it's positive or negative, and, and unfortunately, sometimes it's it's negative out there. Um, I like trying to be a leader. It's my third year here, and um, trying to keep guys sharp, whether it's for practice uh, or games or whatever, is is something that you know you, you need your leaders to step up, and and so that's when you just maybe gotta, you know, shake the bell a little bit in front of their face and wake them up. Come on, Mags. Carry the team. The relationship between me and Magnus is is great. I mean, we've played, you know, it's our second year playing together, and the dynamic sort of started last year. That's another if one. We, you know, if we dogged on him a bit in practice or something, Come then on, Magnus! unbelievable, you know, for the next two days. So I'd be ripping him on purpose, you know, even if it was between periods, I'd, you know, I'd come up beside him and say like, hey, how about you stop a puck this period or something like that, just just to get him going a bit and he'd go out there and he'd be awesome. So that's sort of how it started and it's just kept rolling. So, you know, whether it's practice, game, whatever, I, I sort of get under his skin a bit and, and, you know, give him the gears and it seems like that's when he sort of, uh, you know, tries to shove it back in my face and, and, and is even better. Hey, why didn't Magnus skate? Come on, Mags, you got pads on. Hey, we want to trade goalies. That's one thus far, Magnus. Well, for the most part, the boys are pretty sharp today. Um, good skate around, got a little hairy in a few parts there with some of the guys, but you know, they'll, uh, we'll, we'll get them woken up for tomorrow's game. Um, all in all though, pretty good practice and uh, it, was, it was nice to get the work in. With practice out of the way, the team begins to focus on the task ahead, a road game the following day in Rockford. Practice is over. Several players descend on a local establishment, looking to refuel their bodies after practice and take care of some team business as well. We went out to Bel Air, which is one of our, our favorite restaurants because you know it's good Mexican food. It's um, you know relatively cheap, and then we can enjoy a good good filling lunch. We had a little team meeting as well, which you know it's nice to mix in some business now and then and take care of uh, some housekeeping stuff um, while we're eating but anytime we go out there's there's usually a handful of us that are that are interested in, in spending the day together so it's nice and it's uh, you know good quality time to spend with each other when the check arrives these guys prove there's always a game to be played whether on or off the ice the credit card game is, is a fun little thing to do. I mean, it's more fun when you don't lose it, but um, you all throw your credit cards in a hat and, and the last one to get pulled out is, is getting thrown down for the check, so. It's just a little way to come up with who's picking up the check and uh, sometimes, I mean, obviously if it's, a, if it's a heavy bill, it's, you know, it's a little too much to soak, so we won't do it, but, you know, if there's a couple of you, maybe you'll do it or, or uh, you know, if it's a cheaper meal, you'll do it. You know, it usually ends up working itself out. You might get a few for free, and then you'll have to, to soak up a big one. So it's just a fun little game, um, you know, to keep it keep it spicy after after a meal. Unfortunately for Joe, he was the loser of, of that one and had to pick up that check. After lunch, there's time to unwind before the next commitment of the afternoon. Music to me is, you know, you can use it to get pumped up as, as we do in the locker room and you can use it to settle down and that's the music I, I really enjoy listening to is, is that subtle music that can, you know, bring you down a notch. You know, we're at the rink, you know, banging each other around on the ice and then, yeah, you, you know, you're going, going, going for, for a few hours and then it's nice to, to take a step back and, and enjoy music and being able to play music and enjoy that part of it is is awesome too because it, it just has this sense that you're you're away from stuff for that second you know you're sitting there whether you're playing guitar you, you're just it's you and the guitar and you, 
just listen and then you feel the music. I'm a fan of country music, so um, I like learning a few country songs, but even um, you know some older rock like Tom Petty or anything like that, songs that you can sing along to or that you can you know have friends sing along to is you know makes it awesome for you know those those summer nights by the campfire or up at the cottage or the cabin or whatever. So I don't really pick out one genre, it's more just songs that are easy and fun to play and then everyone can enjoy. It's three o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. Thanksgiving is only two days away and the Admiral squad is back in the team's dressing room getting instructions for that day's community event. So guys, you guys all saw this, where we're going today. We're gonna go there, we'll unload turkeys either from the big yellow truck or Mr. Greenberg. So the community event we had with the Boys and Girls Club, the turkey delivery we call it, it's always been one of my favorite events we've done. It's a, you know, my third year here, I've done it all three years. And, and it just has a, a different feel than you know some of the other stuff, whether it's autograph signings or, or stuff of that nature, because when you get to help out people that, that, you know, that need that help and that are so grateful for that help, it, it's, it's a great feeling. Well, this might be the one. I don't know if that's my, my, my curve, but it might work. It might do the trick. Is this the one? Yeah, yeah, I want TV. Yeah, I want TV, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We gonna be famous. Wrong end. Shoots. Oh, good try, good try. Sometimes, we got jerseys and everything. Nice goal. Oh, delay, delay. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no, put this one down here. Down up there. Is that better? Yeah? So that way, the stick stays nice and flat on the ground. First goal puck. He's keeping that one. When you see the look on a, on a kid's face of how happy they are just, just to be around you and, you know, like, we're nothing special. We're, we're lucky enough to play a game that we love for a living and, and people look up to us for that and that's unbelievable. And, when you can spend time with, with a little kid that, you know, maybe they don't even know a ton about hockey, but, you know, they see this aura around you that, you know, you're, you're an athlete and then, you know, you're, uh, you know, an older figure and, and you're there spending time with them and then shooting hoops or doing whatever with them and automatically they, they just, they gravitate towards you and, and they, they want to spend the time with you and, you know, they're, they're almost disappointed to see you go and, and that's like such a gratifying feeling. Thank you for coming. No problem. It was awesome. I hope you had fun. I did. Yeah? Are you going to enjoy Thanksgiving? Yeah. All right. Hopefully we come back soon and we can play again. Yeah. All right. It's always a great time. You see how much the kids enjoy it and the guys probably enjoy it a little more as you <laughs> saw. So it's, um, it's always awesome and hopefully we uh, made their day a little better and their Thanksgiving weekend, uh, you know, one of their favorites so far. So job well done. For Valentine and the other Admirals, team duty off the ice is just another part of being a professional athlete. The day is not quite done for the roommates from 901. With turkeys delivered and Christmas fast approaching, the boys are eager to get their apartment decorated in the holiday spirit. So Christmas being around the corner, we figured that we'd, we'd spice up our apartment a bit. And uh, you know, it's a little, a little bland with the white walls right now. And so we thought we'd, we'd get into the spirit. Oh, hey, Paul. <laughs> What's up? What's up, boys? Hey, bud. <laughs> Just come to run some errands and run into a team member. Anthony Batetto. Yeah, just kind of hanging out, getting some lights to uh, decorate the house a little bit and make it a little homey. 291 tips. Wow, that's good. Well, we're doing our, we're getting the family Christmas tree, so we got to find a nice one. This one's Virginia pine, so you can't go wrong with that. This is it, the Alberta spruce. No, we'll just need 12 we lights. We found it. This Alberta one, the lit Alberta spruce. It's a uh, 558 tip, six footer, west coast of Canada. God's country. I wouldn't say it's West Coast. But Alberta's pretty West Coast. Western. Western. Western for sure. Sorry, coming from the Vancouver guy. Stocking. They made it just for me. Yes. 
you know, we just wanted to make it feel more like home. And one of the great parts about Christmas, you know, when you're back home is, you know, putting the ornaments on the tree and, and putting out the decorations and Christmas music, which all three of us kind of like. Ever since I was a little kid, ever since I can remember, we'd wake up every morning, me and my bros would put on our robes, my dad would pump the Mariah Carey Christmas CD, and we'd all walk downstairs, start with our stockings, and then do our presents, and the whole time we're doing all that and eating breakfast, Mariah's bumping throughout the whole house. This is our first family ornament. M for Mike. C for Colton. And S for Scott. I don't know, it looks like so far we're going initials for ornaments. And we're going Milwaukee Admirals colors, like blue, silver, kind of, so far. These are the first two things though. Some clear lights, nice six foot Alberta spruce. And uh, we'll see what else we stir up. What do I like about Christmas? Well, usually it means I get to be with my family and, and have some good times and a lot of good food and just overall everyone's happy and, and cheerful and that's what I, I like best about it. But uh, this year I'm going to spend it with my new family here. So it'll be a little bit different. I'm sure I'll, I'll miss my real family back home, but uh, that's what I like about it. Just just spending time with your loved ones and, and close friends of yours. I'm going to get the blue beads. Look, check that wrapping out. Yeah, that's good enough. I'm going to wrap all their gifts in Bieber. Every little stocking stuffer, even if it's like a little chocolate, it's going to be wrapped in a big box of Bieber. We went with the Christmas colors. White, green, red. Yeah, well, the other night, we went and saw Mika and Rasker, Salamaki, and Mika was in the bathroom, and I saw his advent calendar up on the, in the kitchen. And I just went and actually took two different days of chocolates out. And I guess one of them was yesterday and he realized it and asked me today at the rink. But he doesn't know he's got another one coming on the 18th that he's gonna miss out on. From all of us at 901, I just wanna say thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed our antics. Merry Christmas. With a long season ahead, the Admirals know they can count on Scott Valentine to log crucial minutes defensively and fill other roles as needed. The grind that is an AHL season has just begun, and hopes of another Admirals playoff run rest squarely on the broad shoulders of Valentine and his teammates.